It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game College for Mega Tournament where we are still playing Fallen City of Kerez. Now it's the re risen City of Kerez. Um, and I think it's time, you know, we're, we're about, I think we have four turns left before the game's over, so we're halfway done uh, turn wise. I would say probably a little more, a little less than halfway done game wise because there's just more things people can do on a given turn, partially because there's a lot more people out here. And there's a lot more options, so things should take longer, although hopefully it won't feel that way to you, the viewer, because, you know, though maybe it will. Um, so, we're there. Let's, let's think of, let's reflect on the game a little bit midway through. Um, it seems like the people who have been the most successful in using the adventuring parties have been doing the best. What are the ways that you can get points in this game? You can get it by getting valor and adventuring. Um, you can get it by producing goods and buying buildings. That would be another category. And you can get it by owning a dungeon. It seems like that's kind of what the game is divided into. Owning a dungeon? I just am not seeing the real advantage to it. Um, you can sacrifice adventurers to get treasure, but you only get one treasure, whereas if you adventure, you get a, a lot more. Uh, but maybe, let's see, is there... Yeah, if you, if you, if you own an open dungeon, you get a point. That's it. So, it, it seems, but it seems like there's a lot of stuff devoted to the dungeon in the game. You start, everyone, all the factions start out with dungeon monster cards. And maybe that is to facilitate the expansion that actually came in the game, but it's supposed to be an expansion. I, I think maybe it should just be the full game. Maybe the game is meant to be played with that. If, if, you, forget, if you forgot, that expansion involves having a, a secret traitor to the, the cause, right? And I think that makes more sense to have all this, this monster stuff that the players get if they have something to use it for, some potential to use it for, and they don't seem to have that right now. So, it seems like you kind of just need to, to be the first player and just be successful in your dungeoneering and maybe have some, uh, some like, board support. I think if I were to give advice to someone on playing this game, that's what I would say, although... You know, I'm by no means an expert. I do think it's probably a game that's best played, not solitaire. Um, I, I think I'll try it with my family. I think my family might enjoy it. Um, but yeah, so let's just let's just get started. I already went ahead and did what everyone's going to do this turn. Now I just have to activate it, and then we'll see what happens. One thing I'm noticing, actually, is that there's going to be... Um, there's only one person adventuring this turn. So after you adventure... Oftentimes, you're, unless you do really well, you're left spent. You know, you have to spend some time getting your forces back because you're going to lose something oftentimes when you adventure. Cowboy has lost very little, and he's just done very well. So maybe that's part of it. It's not that he, his strategy has really paid off. It's just that he's been really lucky. So here we have what everyone did. I'll let, give you a moment to kind of take that in because I'm sure you know what all of this means by now since we've been so thorough. In exploring this game together, um, there are some new buildings opened up. You see those golden, they call them lava lamps in the rules. Um, I'm not sure I think they're lava lamps, but that was actually, that kind of threw me off for a while. I was like, what's a lava lamp? I'm not seeing a lava lamp, but I guess it's kind of, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I, I won't talk about lava lamps anymore. Let's talk about these new buildings, what they do. There's these gardens. Now, a lot of these new buildings, they only help you if you happen to own it. So whereas before, other people could use the building, and then you might have a proprietary use as the owner, two of the four new buildings are just useful if you own it. So this one's owned by Flips here, and it's pretty great. You put a person or an adventurer down, it's either, that's why I'm reading that slash, and you can get a a gold ball, a gold cube, and a valor cube. That seems like a really useful thing. Also useful is this council hall. You put a person down, and you get a, a gold cube from everyone in the game. Uh, so if you time that right, in a five-player game, you can get four cubes off of one 
person, one action. Now I think Cowboy was able to do that and create an item since it take, took only one action to put down both of these people. Um, then we have a temple, which you can put down a person to get two gold cubes if you own it. And then you can also, this is how you can bring your people back to life. You can trade one of your blobs in order to get a person back to life. And then finally we have the slave pits, which was pretty tasty for Demi and he's glad he got it because it's a way you can just add people by spending gold. Unfortunately, he didn't have any gold so because he, he had spent it all in the slave pits. Um, another interesting thing to note, uh, Weasel has been kind of tied up in terms of what he can do because he's been building, you know, and he also has two of his markers on the black market here because of his debt. So he has, he has only like one or two different shields that he can use every turn. Um, so that's that's a real inhibitor for him. And just take one last look around. You notice not a lot of stuff got made. Um, we're going to have some leveling up here. What else is happening? Uh, Watermelon's continuing to build back her dungeon here and here. Weasel was unable to do that because of the people. People are getting money. People are getting valor, and just Cowboy is going to be exploring and not even at the, the highest level thing. So we might see, this is something I was trying to get at, we might see the threat level go back up and have things change the other way. And since people, at least two people are going to be dying, we might drift back down from city back into town. Cowboy ended up fighting a succubus. Um, it gave him a little bit of a struggle, but he has, he prevailed fairly easily at the same time. Although one of his rogues did get injured. Um, he also made a trade. This is, this is something I didn't mention. You can free trade in this game. He traded Boots of Speed. He got those from Flips for um, this Golden Shield, which helps her Templar. That's nice. Let's look at our, our town. Our town's grown up to 16 people. There was only four threat at the turn and a lot more valor. I, you know, this is, this is really kind of stymied a lot of people. Uh, for example, Watermelon, there's no way for her to get to do her bonus thing, which is put threat cubes on here, because there's none of these guys, and they're all sacrificed. They're not coming back because there keeps being so much more valor than threat, and I don't know what she can do about that. Um, the only way for her to put threat cubes on here, as far as I know, and maybe I should recheck the, the rule book, is to sacrifice these adventures to it to add to the threat, or to have someone try to attack her, her dungeon, and deal with this, you know, and uh, and then fail. So she's got a, a hefty stack of monster cards, but there's not a lot she can do with it. Um, it'd be nice if maybe she could invade someone or do something like that, or or maybe like sacrifice some monster cards to add to threat or do something like that, but it seems totally out of her hands since she's so late in the turn order, and maybe this, maybe she made a big mistake early on. Um, maybe the first thing she should have done is open up a dungeon, the second thing is sacrifice a, a person. But then, you know, again, they would, they would get removed unless she could do something to help these things, right? Maybe if she could add to that pile or do something in some way to make the, be able to make the threat higher other than um, sacrifice adventures. Before I speak too more, much more on that though, I should do another check because there could be something I'm missing. Okay, really similar to what happened last turn. There are some differences, but for the most part, about the same things happened. Um, what is notable? Well, I guess everyone is, is going to be doing stuff this turn. I forgot to put this down here. Um, and all the adventures are going to be be gone again. So I guess it's a little different. Flips took the middle one, which is probably what Cowboy would have taken. Um, and she also ended up getting this one as well. Below it, Weasel's like, hey, I've got a knight. If she fails, I'll send my knight, see what happens. It's only two guys. I might be able to get something out of it. Um, might as well try. It'll be interesting to see what happens during this one, because that could change things quite a bit. He thought about maybe going against Watermelon, but Watermelon's got this huge stack of cards, you know? And she's only going to be getting a, getting two more. And so that, that seemed a little difficult. But otherwise, people kind of did a lot of the same stuff. Um, people are kind of locked. You know, a lot of watermelons options are taken away because there are no adventurers. Uh, 
less, you know, not a lot of items being produced. I don't know. So let's let's see what happens. The adventuring really paid off for Flip. She was successful in both adventures and she only came out with one wound. Having all this defense and being able to re-roll things really helped to, to protect her whole group. She did have to use her special nature medicine, which um, is really useful if you have a ranger. But out of it, she got this this uh, blob, which she, you know, if she gets a chance, she can trade it in for yet one of her her only dead hero, this cleric here. I don't know if she'll do that or not. Um, probably. I mean, what are the chances she'll get another one? We're getting close to the end of the game. She also got uh, these arrows of doom, which are nice for a ranger. She has two rangers and a ring of power. Um, so great for you flips. Now it's time for cowboy to go against this more challenging one that has all of this stuff he has to contend with. Luckily, he's really mighty. Okay, cowboy has managed to struggle through this this difficult, what is it, a haunted keep. Probably shouldn't have gone for a haunted keep. Um, probably should start thinking about the types of the things you have. The numbers do matter that they're able to do. So like a cleric, he gets a free, free five. There's a lot of undead in this haunted keep. And um, they oftentimes have fives in their hit points. So if you have a free five, then that, that's good for you. A part of it also is he's gotten, his luck's kind of ran out. So just, he's been drawing undead cards, right? So um, Flips on her turn also drew two undead cards. But look at the difference here. Can you see the difference? So she had the zombie and the skeleton, and he had the wraith and the ghost. So they're, you know, they're quite a bit more difficult. Um, but now he has to go against this golem. I'm not going to roll it out, but I just want to show you what's on the line. He's not going to flee, but he's got this mighty hero that has these two advancements on it. Uh, if he's able to keep that till the end of the game, that uh, will give him extra points as long as his hero is the most advanced. And he's the only person who's managed to advance his hero. On the bright side, if the hero does die, it'll lose its stuff, but um, he can bring it back to life because he's got these. And he typically goes first, although Clips might go first this time. She's, she's beaten him in Valor, um, and they'll be tied in Valor yeah, if, he, if he's successful. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this out and then get back to you. All right, he did it without any risk of counterattack. What he did was he got one, two, two ones, a uh, three, and a four, and then he used his Might Potion to add two more dice and got a three which he could then change to a two with his axes. So I kind of built that up needlessly. Although, who knows, you know, it could have been very different. We have to allow for um, upsets, even if it seems like it's going to be, you know, fairly even or tricky at the beginning. So well done, Cowboy. So that's going to put him, s ooh, nope, there's a limit on these cubes. That would put him ahead on Valor, but... Uh, they're tied instead because I guess there's a limit on everything except for wounds in this game. And so they both have eight. He's still going to go first. All right, at the start of the seventh turn, we have all of the people that could possibly want to live in Carez. In Carez, um, we're, we're running out of things except for adventures. Now, that could prove interesting. That could change the incentives somewhat. Since you can't get Valor by going here, hmm, what's the incentive to go there? Well... You can get quite a lot with that treasure. That would be the main incentive. Um, this might be a time when the, the rich just kind of buttress their position in other ways. Look out across the field, see what else they can get. Use their lock on the first, first two turn spots. And by rich, I mean the people who've done well in the exploring, actually money-wise. Weasel is, is doing better than Flips, but Flips is rich in other resources. So, you know, I could, I could picture them maybe going out and just hitting a few things and then just letting the, the threat kind of stay there, right? Even if, they, even if they don't do anything really, except for maybe use a little bit of their stuff, they're gonna keep the first, pers first player spot and this thing is gonna stay over here, right? Because it's gonna be one, two, six to all the, the valor that's in the game. So it might be kind of stagnant until the end. We'll see. Let's make some choices. All right, everyone did their activations and whatnot, and it did stay pretty stagnant. Uh, Cowboy's just getting richer, and she's just getting stronger. She's getting some wealth over here. Cowboy actually bought 
a sword from Weasel. Uh, Weasel's getting ready to go into a dungeon. Um, he's just going to send this guy. He doesn't care that much. If he does well, he's just doing it for fun. So let's see what he goes against. He's going to go against this eyeball thing. It's a humanoid, I think. It's a barbarian. All right, Weasel's knight uh, killed the barbarian, was severely wounded afterwards, and then got killed by a carnivorous plant. So he gets a plot in the graveyard, and I guess he maybe should have tried that sooner because he's going to get to score more points or more money off of that in the final turn of the game. So that's some good strategy there. If you own the cemetery and you're not very good at fighting, go ahead and send your weak guy, if you have one, into a dungeon. Jeez, Cowboy's team here is, is pretty powerful. He gets to roll six attack dice, five defense dice, plus he gets a bonus five and six die. So it's like having another die that says five, another die that says six. And he gets these throwing axes. Um, and that's all before most enemies even get to act. So he just kind of swept this dungeon, no problem. Flips isn't going to get to move there. Still, he's not getting any um, valor out of it. He gets to roll three of these, but the gold's almost all gone. So he doesn't get this gold. So luckily he rolled a couple of crystals, so at least he gets those. He gets some crystals, and that's going to do it for the round. Everything's dry. Everything's dry. Oh, did he, he got some gold. Okay. So all the gold's gone. All the, all the crystals are almost gone. This last turn is pretty much just going to be people sitting there, because, like, these fellows, why should they even do anything? Really? There's nothing they can get except for maybe a, a gem of some sort. Uh, anyway, let's go into the last turn. Alrighty, that's going to do it. Um, Cowboy was the clear winner. Flips didn't do as well as I thought she did. Uh, looking at the scoring, um, I didn't really pay too much attention to it during the game. I did a lot of stuff that was a little off in the game. I don't think we can really judge the game wholly based on my playing. I think... Uh, Probably with a five-player kind of maybe kind of tricky, though I think if you had players that were more invested in their side than I could possibly be in kind of like thinking about how best to do things. You know, I, I don't want to judge whether the game has problems based on this plane is what I'm saying. So let's just get on to the tournament. So how I decided to do how the scoring would work on here, I, I kind of thought of a number of different ways. Um, is I took the top three scores and then I, t I got the average of those, and that brought us to nine. Um, yeah, nine would be the, the average of the top three scores. And then for every point you are above that, you get 50 points, and for every point you're below that, you lose 50 points. So let's go to our board here. Cowboy had 13, so that's four above nine. Um, so that is going to take him to negative 164. That's great for Cowboy. Um, flips, she's at 7, so she's 2 below 9, so she's going to lose 100. Flips, 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 flips. So she's still in the game. Negative 436. Uh, Demi is right at 9, so he's going to stay the same. Negative 300. Watermelon did the worst. She had 4 points, um, but luckily she's only at negative 280. So let's see, 9 times um, 50, that's going to be 450, and so she, that still might take her out, 680, yet watermelon's out of the game. Oh, that's sad. She really, I blame myself for that. Um, you know, I, I would kind of flippantly put them all in a game I didn't fully understand, and as a result, she's gone. I mean, it was just the the luck of the draw that she got what she got and maybe I didn't know how to play it right so I'm sorry watermelon goodbye and then I think we're gonna have another guy goodbye probably with weasel yeah he had five points I'm not even gonna that's negative 400 weasel you're also out so two hard losses after this game of fallen city of Carez we can feel good that Carez is doing well as a city, and I think it's going to continue to prosper, although maybe it will stagnate. I don't know. Um, we'll see what what happens next time. I don't know if I have any games with City in the title or Carez in the title other than this one, um, but I could probably find something uh, next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament English Leg.